All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's webinar, How to Get a Full Book of Web Design Clients. We are so excited to have everyone. I already see it kind of happening, so let's use the chat to get to know each other. Let us know where you're from in the world, maybe even what time it is, because we know there's a lot of you staying up late. Um, if you've been to an Editor X or Dribble workshop before, please let us know in the chat as well. We're so excited to have you back. Um, and we'd love to know if you're already currently using Editor X or you're already a part of Brad's team and you know want to grow. We're so excited for this. Before we kind of jump in, I did want to cover a few housekeeping items, kind of just to give you a lay of the land of this platform and how today's going to go. Uh, we have the chat room where we're all excited, where we all have the opportunity to chat with each other. Feel free to share, you know, links and, and where you're from. Um, and then we have a section that's labeled Q&A. Now, this is a great opportunity to ask Brad questions directly. There is a voting section on there. So if someone's already asked a question that you love, upvote it. If there's a question that hasn't been asked, feel free to drop a new one and we'll see if the community responds as well. This will be an interactive experience for everyone, right? So uh, throughout the presentation, Brad will have polls pop up where providing your input is super helpful so we can understand and make sure the webinar is geared towards your, uh, your goals today. So please uh, engage in the polls that pop up. Uh, and then at the end of the event, if we have some time, we may even have an opportunity for some people to jump on stage with Brad if your mic and your webcam and everything's ready to go. Um, and ask him questions directly um, and just kind of get an opportunity to speak to him as well. Um, if you have any technical issues throughout this event, feel free to tag uh, the Dribble team in the chat section um, or click on the help tab and there should be some input there for you as well. Uh, lastly, if you are not following Editor X, Brad at Brad Hussey on Twitter, please go ahead and do so. Uh, they're so awesome to be providing this really resourceful uh, educational content for the Dribble community. So we're excited and we want to make sure uh, that you get a chance to follow them throughout their career and as Editor X grows as well. There also is a interactive PDF that we will be using today. So if you did not have a chance to download that, the Dribble team, the Editor X team will continue to drop that in the chat. So please go ahead and download that. It's something that we want you to be able to use in terms of following along Brad today, um, but it's gonna be more an engagement opportunity. If you don't get the full scope of writing everything down today, that's okay. You can you know, fill it out afterwards as well. There also will be a recording that is sent out via Editor X following the event as well, so you can watch after. I know some of you may be a little bit sleepy right now, so that's okay, and you can all the, watch the full event following uh, when we send out the recording as well. Uh, before I introduce Brad, I do want to thank our sponsors, Editor X. Um, you may already know this. Editor X is the advanced web creation platform for professionals. They've been a great partner with the Dribble community for the last few years. They've provided a lot of free webinars and free courses. There's tons of content on their site in terms of growing your career, whether it's web design or your freelance side. And with their generous sponsorship, they've made this event free. So please make sure to thank Editor X on any social channel you tag. Um, and then without further ado, I'd love to introduce Brad Hussey. Brad is the host of today's webinar. He's a web creator, a web consultant. He's taught thousands of successful designers and developers to help them kind of grow their freelance and creative careers. He is the founder of Creative X Crew, an online community where he provides professionals with advice and resources on the craft, technique, and the business of web design. So again, thank you all for joining and we will turn it over to Brad and get started. Hey everyone, how's it going? Let me know if you can see and hear me all right. My name's Brad Hussey. Uh, I'm very excited for this. Anyone who's already in the Creative X crew, CXC, give us a shout out in the chat there. I already see a number of familiar faces. Very cool. Love the support from the community here. Uh, looks like we've got a ton of people from all over the place. So I just want a quick shout out as well to those of you who are lying sideways in bed with your phones right now and hanging out with us. That is so cool. Really appreciate it. We hope to give you a ton of value so that when you wake up in the morning and you have that fresh cup of coffee, you're ready to put something into action and get that business moving. So great, just real quick in the chat here, it moves so fast. So I'm gonna try and see, we got Ben, Samantha, Susan, Joe, 
Taiwan. We got people from the UK, Colombia, India, Chicago, Washington, Thailand, Pakistan, South Africa, Greece, Puerto Rico, Cincinnati, Ohio. Any Canadians in the house? Shout out in the chat. I don't know. Norway, yes. Uruguay, Montreal, Nova Scotia. Oh, there we go. There we are. We're so polite. We're staying quiet in the chat, but here we are. Awesome. Okay, everyone, I'm really, really, really excited uh, to, to bring this webinar to you. And I always like to say whenever I'm putting something out there, doing a webinar, a presentation, a live stream, if you're going to dedicate an hour, an hour and a half, whatever you're dedicating, investing, that, that costs you something. So sure, it was free. You didn't pay admission but you paid in your time and that's even more valuable. So I wanna make sure that this next hour, hour and a half party is something that uh, you get 10 times the value from. So I am gonna give you my absolute best so that we can, uh, we can get your business moving, we can grow your business and you can see that value on the other end. So let's pull up that screen here to get started with this webinar. And we're calling it how to get a full book of web design clients. And so the whole goal here is really to get you fully booked, to give you the principles so that you can apply it in, in your business and get fully booked. And so here is the, the, the problem here, the core problem that most of us are experiencing. Feel free to give us a thumbs up as well if you agree with this statement. Creative freelancers, whether you're new, I know I say new creative freelancers, but this is kind of most freelancers struggle to turn their talents into profits. Their, their talents and their creative abilities into a creative business. And that's usually because of a lack of knowledge and skills in running a business, which is a totally different game. It's a complex machine. It's like the whole left brain, right brain thing. You're creative and you're good at what you do, but how do you turn that into a business? So that's what we want to be able to do here. The solution is to provide you with that step-by-step -step roadmap so that that creative person that, that you are you can follow something like a guideline, a rule book, and go, that's how I turn that into a business that is profitable, that can sustain my lifestyle and, and, and help me get that freedom that I'm looking for. So we're want, we want to give you that. We want to show you that. Looks like lots of people agree <laughs> with that statement. Good. So in this webinar, top level overview here, you're going to walk away with business skills and principles that you can apply. No fluff here. It's just tried and true methods and principles that you can apply every day, all day, all year, all the time. I just want to give it in a digestible format. It's going to help you get fully booked as a creative professional. You're going to walk away with tools, knowledge, and resources to apply to your business so that you can start moving towards that freedom that freelancing gives you. Most importantly, a practical five-step business growth plan that you can use every day. And that's in that workbook. And we're going to share momentarily, probably a number of you have already downloaded it. And at the end of this, access to a community, the Creative X crew, a number of us are already here, which is so cool. They're like my cheerleaders um, of creative professionals who keep you accountable. We, we meet up every week. We do co-working sessions, lots of resources, events, and we're going to continue our conversation. And what we learn and apply today is just the tip of the iceberg, and we'll carry that forward. So quick introduction to myself here. My name is Brad Hussey, and I'm Canadian. I'm a designer, I'm an educator, I'm a creator, and most importantly, I'm a father and a husband. And that's why I do what I do. I always like to say, build a business that serves your family rather than having a family that serves your business. And so that's, what, that's my ethos. That's what this is all about. I do that. I do what I do. I like to serve you guys because it allows me to serve these guys. So. Little background into why you might want to trust what I'm saying and 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 follow along. Uh, I'm a design freelancer. I've been doing it for a very long time, for more than 10, 11 years. I've worked on projects with clients from my own backyard to literally all over the world. Uh, as a design educator, I've created courses and programs that have sold to more than a half a million people in nearly every country of the world. As a creator. In the design space, I've worked with some admirable brands that probably all of you have heard of. So it's a great privilege to be able to be here and to collaborate with Dribble and Editor X. At the very beginning of my design career, I would go to Dribble and look at good designs and go, man, I wish I could be like that. I wish I was a good designer like that because that's where you get that inspiration 
and it's still like that today. So to get to be here is a, is a tremendous privilege for me. So getting here was a very long journey. So that screenshot, a picture of me on the left, is um, me probably looking at Dribble <laughs> in design school. I went to college for a couple of years for interactive design. We learned design, code, some business, SEO. We learned Flash before it no longer <laughs> was a thing. But I just started freelancing back then. I started getting some clients on the side. And today, I would like to consider what I have a very wonderful, flourishing career that provides for my family. And it was a long journey. But to get here, there was a key moment that I had this career epiphany. Um, it was at, uh, when I worked my first, my one and only studio job as a front end web developer. I was there and we were at a company office party, Christmas party, cocktail party. And somewhere in the conversation, my boss jokingly said to my wife, you know, I spend more time with your husband than you do. And so, ha, 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 we laughed. That was, was so funny. And then it caught me off guard. I thought about it and did the math. And he was right. <laughs> and so he actually did spend more time or at least equal amounts of time uh, with me than uh, my wife. So I just thought, ah, that doesn't work for me. That's like not my thing. And so that set in motion a plan to quit my job and go full-time as a freelancer within a year. Gave myself a timeline. And so that's exactly what I did. Within that year, I quit my job as a front-end web developer. And I went full-time as a freelancer in 2012, if I'm getting my dates right. I had to think about it. It's been so long now. But here's the catch, though. It was months before our first child was born. So <laughs> talk about um, uh, lighting a fire under your butt. This is where rational people go, not the right time to quit your job, Brad. Not me. Not me. So I definitely use that as uh, fire to say, all right, we burned the boats, so <laughs> we got to figure it out. And it's probably because of that, that I have had a hunger to succeed in this space because I wanted to be able to stay at home and, and see my children grow up and experience everything. And I'm proud to say that now with these, my kids, with three of them, and this first born child who is almost, almost 10, um, it's normal for them to know that I work at home and to think that people go away for work. It's a bit of a weird concept. So for me, I go, great, <laughs> perfect. That's what I wanted. It's been a really wild ride. And I've learned that the freedom and the flexibility that comes with freelancing and working for yourself is like gold. That's your million dollar salary right there. It really is. But it doesn't come without the unpredictability and, and stress, and it's full of adventures, both amazing and um, terrifying. And I've experienced all of the above in between, all throughout. So about 11 years later, reflecting on my experience, putting this presentation together and thinking about it, with all the opportunities and my journey, I realized and discovered that there really is a formula that you can follow for success in this career. As a creative professional, as a web designer, as a freelancer, there's a formula to it. And so if I had to start all over again, it's this exact formula that I would follow. And it's this exact formula that I'm going to share with you today. And that's the basis of our workshop and what we're gonna do today. Does that sound good? Okay, so we're gonna throw a poll up on the screen. I wanna know a little more about you. Enough about me. I want to know more about you. Who's here? What's your creative business? We're going to throw a poll up here on the screen. It's just going to pop up in the corner and right beside me here. What's your creative business? Are you a freelancer on the side? Are you a full-time freelancer? Do you freelance with subcontractors? Maybe you're an agency owner, or maybe you're something else. Maybe you are some other sort of creative freelancer. So yeah, head to that poll tab, and we'll see here the results. So cool. This is really neat. Lots of people voting. So it looks like so far... We've got freelancers on the side and full-time. So we're kind of balanced between full-time and side hustlers. We got quite a bit of agency owners in here too. That's really, really cool. Nice. Okay, so what's cool about this is whether you're freelancing on the side or you are full-time, 
the reality is, is you can apply these principles wherever you are at in your business. Whether you are like me in that picture I showed where I was in school, total side hustler in, in college, going to school, but then freelancing on the side, these principles apply to that person. These principles also apply to the agency owner who brings in 100,000, quarter million a year and everything in between. So these principles we can apply. And a lot of the time, <laughs> even though we're full time, we, we don't realize, we, we can't see, there's that great phrase, you can't read uh, the label from inside the jar. So we're inside our own jar and sometimes we need an outside perspective. And that's what, that's what we're gonna provide here as well. Super cool. All right, so that was great to know. What I want to do now is let you know why I believe Editor X is kind of like that secret sauce in your journey. Lots of different tools from no code to full code and everything in between that we can use as creative freelancers building our sites and managing our businesses and our clients' businesses. But I want to share briefly here why I think Editor X is like that secret sauce that I didn't have in those early stages. But had I have had it, it would have been like having um, a partner in my side of the, of the ring to really help me succeed. And it probably would have saved me a lot of heartache and stress and even money as well with all the things you got to string together to run your creative business. So as you know, it's a powerful web creation platform uh, with advanced design layout functionalities and capabilities for designers and web agencies like. So not only can you build amazing, beautiful, responsive sites, and you can do anything that you want. It's also a powerful business tool. It includes capabilities like e-commerce, online stores, a content manager, restaurant and event management, bookings, payments, automation, member areas, blogs, like you name it, throw it at it, it can handle it. There's a way to, to use this. So it's a powerful tool to build your sites or your clients' sites especially and, and use these features to to empower your business to offer better solutions to your clients and more value. So we're gonna be showing you how that works throughout as well, okay? Uh, TJ says, I heard there were snacks here. <laughs> I brought my own, bring your own coffee and popcorn. All right, Editor X, my point here is that it grows with you. So you're starting, you got a quarter million a year or more agency, anything in between, Editor X can grow with you. And they're gonna provide you with the tools and resources that you need to succeed. They can keep up with you. As you grow. So let's dig in. So you've got that workbook, download the PDF, and we're going to work on this together. Now, quick, quick note, don't feel like you need to open up another tab and, and jot notes in your workbook or print it out and, and write it out. Have it on hand, follow along, maybe think of some ideas, use the chat as your inputs to just write what you're thinking you want to add for, for your workbook. Because you're going to be able to review this later. There is a replay. That's the number one question so far. Absolutely replays. And after this, we're going to continue our conversation together. I'm going to invite you to join us in the Creative X crew. And we're going to be doing some work over the coming weeks on your workbooks. So keep them handy. Follow along. Think about how you're going to fill it out. And if you want to fill it out and if you can multitask, great. If not, it's more important to pay attention. Got it. Moving on. The concept here is the rule of ones. So we're going to focus on the secret sauce here. This is it. This is the slide that tells you the answer to your success. And I'm going to break it down. Focus on one client persona, one offer, one traffic source, and one conversion method for one year. You're definitely going to see something amazing happen in your business. The closer you get to this, the better results you're going to see. We're not going to nail this perfectly. Nobody does. But the closer you can get to this bullseye, the, the more success you're going to see. Okay, why does this work? These five steps, client, persona, offer, marketing channel, conversion method, one year, all focusing on one thing. Because complexity kills progress. The more you add in, the more you put on your plate, the more things you're doing, the worse you do everything that you're doing. Just think about it. Think, think that you're making breakfast in the morning and you're cooking and you're making coffee and you're also trying to help your kid with homework while simultaneously vacuuming and painting your house. All of those things are going to fail. Not only will you probably burn your house down, your kids are gonna fail the homework lesson. Uh, you probably vacuumed the shag rug and it tangled up in your vacuum and broke your vacuum. 
and you made a mess with paint. Like all of it's a mess. It just sounds stupid. It sounds ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous, but that's what most freelancers are doing. Okay. Vicky says, I can do like a billion eight hundred thousand things very crappy. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So um, this is so hard to choose though. Let me show you why and how you can choose. Okay, so this is most freelancers. This is most of our brains. This is why most freelancers aren't succeeding. We're creative, so our brains are firing at all cylinders, right? But that doesn't help in business, okay? So this is what's happening with most freelancers. It looks like this. You're a brand expert, web designer, graphic designer. You're also dabbling database dev, AI, game design, and you're helping restaurants, healthcare coaches, your mom's friend, healthcare. You're using WordPress, Editor X, Custom Code, Tailwind, Canva, Bootstrap, Figma. You're also a software coach, email marketing, copywriting. You heard about this. You followed this. You do this. You do this. And you never, ever get your portfolio done at the end of the day. It's just a total mess. This is why freelancers don't succeed. It's this right here. Agree? Got it. Okay. This is what you should be aiming for. One thing. That's why this the whole thing is the rule of ones. The more you layer in, the higher likelihood of you failing at the thing. It should look more like this. This is an example. Don't think that this is exactly what you need to be doing, but this is an example. Let's say you focus on web design using Editor X as a platform for online coaches. That's more of my niche. I quite literally build sites and marketing collateral with Editor X for coaches. It's just the niche that I've found when I deliver services to my clients and I do web design services. Okay. So one client persona. What is a client persona? Client persona is a pretend person and it represents your target customer. Creating one's going to help you understand who they are, what they suffer with. And I use that word very specifically suffer, not what problem do they have or what's kind of annoying to them? Because if you have an itch, you can scratch it. You can go up to the door jam and rub your back on the corner of the door. But if you're suffering with something, you need immediate and urgent help. That's where you want to be, okay? This is going to make everything easier. It all hinges first, like if you're building a tower of Lego blocks, on the base. This is the base, the client persona. Who? Okay? Pull. Pull time. Have you ever created a client persona? This might seem like an obvious question, but I wouldn't be surprised if most of us didn't really. We've heard of it, sure. But I mean, did you have you literally sat down and created a very specific client persona? So we're going to throw that up in a poll. And it looks like a lot of people are <laughs> posting in the chat anyway. So we got a little bit of a hint here. But I want to see. I want to see the stats. Yes, no. Have you ever cr created a client persona? For me, I have. Um, but I should be better at it. And the, the more you focus on this and the more clear you get, the better. In fact, when I defined my client persona, which was like coaches, creators, authors, speakers, this kind of field, and I started doing research and asking them questions and interviewing them, I was grateful that I put that effort into it because it paid in dividends afterwards because I was very clear on my offer, my pricing, what they suffered with. I spoke their language. I spoke the words that they were saying. And they were like, it's like you're in my brain. And you're like, it's because I am in your brain. I've talked to a whole bunch of you and found out what you actually need. So here's my offer. And they go, where have you been all my life? That's what you want. So there, we got 59, 60% haven't created a cl uh, client persona. And the reality is, is I understand. It's kind of a bit of a you feel like, why? Why does it matter? So I want to actually convert you to realizing that it actually really matters. If you don't do this, I promise you're going to have a hard time succeeding. Promise. Totally promise. Because most of us here are like, I build websites for people who need websites. That's my client persona. Like, well, that's not a client persona. That's just you making stuff up and hoping for the best. That's not good business. So thank you for letting me know. No judgment. Because we're here to help. So in the workbook. This is the first section, the first page. One client persona. We're going to be focusing on demographics, geographics, psychographics, and behaviors. It's really simple. It looks like this. This is what is on the workbook. So here's an example. I put a little example together here. So we got name, age, gender, location, occupation, income. Okay. Then we got fears, acquisition channels. I'll explain that in a sec. Goals and pain points. So 
give it a name, give the persona a name. Cause otherwise it doesn't feel like a person. You're just like, ah, oh, I want to help coaches. You're like, okay, but who, what kind of coaches, where are they at? So John Doe, generic name, he's 40. And he's a guy from Chicago and his occupation is a speaker and author. And his income is around 150 K. So I'm targeting kind of like higher performance coaches here, uh, authors, speakers, he's on the speaking circuit, you know, okay. What's he afraid of? This is, this matters. It's not just like, Oh, we're painting a picture and we get to really feel and empathize with the person. Sure. But it's really to help guide you to know, like, who do I actually want to help? Who's this person? So you're shaping this model out that you're going to go out and find who represents that model closest. So not enough money to pay in, uh, to pay the bills. So that's a fear has to go back to the day job. If this all falls apart and he has to go back to a day job and that's a fear, probably because he doesn't have a lot of experience in day jobs and doesn't know how to get a job and wouldn't be able to provide for his family in an expensive city like Chicago. Uh, afraid younger speakers are going to come eat his lunch. You know, they're, they get it. They get AI. They're good at branding and marketing and they're just, you know, they're more with it and maybe a little more charismatic on the stage. He's afraid, you know, he's going to miss important family events due to too much travel. Okay. So those are some fears. Everybody's insecure about something. This is what this person seems to be insecure about. Okay. Goals. Let's go down here to goals. $1 million income is his goal. He wants to create a scalable income with courses and coaching programs. Work, we want to work four days a week, hire a full-time assistant. Sounds like he's building out a picture of the dream. Is he going to nail this perfectly? I don't know. But if you can help him get closer to that, that's valuable. Okay. Pain points. What are the actual practical pain points? So not fears, like the irrational fears, like I'm afraid of this crazy thing happening. No, what are the actual pain points that immediately right now your customer persona suffers with? So John works six days a week, 10 plus hour days. He's like totally overworked. He's tired from too much travel, works very hard to secure a single client at a time. His single clients pay good money, but it's one client at a time. When he's working on that client, on that engagement, on that uh, stage, he's not getting other clients until he's done and finding other clients. So he's kind of just chasing down clients. And that's the struggle for him. Acquisition channels, this is a fancy marketing way of saying, where can you find John? Well, direct outreach, do some Googling, look for speakers, okay? That's one way that you can access John. LinkedIn, most certainly going to be on LinkedIn. Niche communities, maybe there's a podcast about how to grow your speaking business. You follow that podcaster, find out if they have a community or a blog, a newsletter, website, and get in that community. Get on their podcast, get in their newsletter. Get in that audience and listen to what those people are suffering with. That's going to be a key. And also conferences. Probably speaking at a conference. Go to where they're speaking. That's an example. Okay, so client persona. Here's the thing. You can create more than one client persona. This is a workbook after all. You can come up with like 10 different client personas. The, the whole idea here is you're iterating on a client persona until you find out, you know what? I think this client persona is what I want to pursue, okay? Christina asks real quick here, how do you get this profile information in your head? Like, think about it this way. You're not just pulling a random fake person out of a hat. You got to think like, you're going to be spending a lot of time helping this person and researching this person and going to their conferences and going to their events and listening to their podcast or whatever, meeting with them, talking with them, figuring out how you can help them. You darn well better actually enjoy it. So pick a person that you want to spend time with that you would love to hear them tell you about what they're struggling with so that you can help them. Like, think of that. Okay. Um, so that would be my way of saying it. It's, it's, it's in your own head. You kind of conceptualize a person and you can create more than one. And so you go, you know what? I really like what this person represents. And then what you need to also make sure is that you're picking the right one. Cause you might go, I really jive with this person, but if they're not a key decision maker in the business, like, for example, the chief marketing officer, to use some fancy terminology here, they're going to understand the value of a website over, say, maybe the HR manager. They just different priorities. You know, you want to talk to the person who's more likely to say, sign me up. Where do I, you know, where do I send the money? 
I agree to your terms. Like, let's do this. Rather than the person that goes, sounds nice. Let me go and talk to my superior or let me go and talk to my partner. Like you want to talk to the key decision makers. So your customer persona, you make it up, but it's based on someone you want to work with. And then you got to verify and validate, do they exist? So there's work to be done here. That's why those acquisition channels are there. You got to go find them. Are they there? Is this a viable customer persona? Book some calls, talk to them, ask them questions. Don't sell them anything. Just find out, do they exist? Do they have the problems I think they have? What are their actual problems? Okay, step one. Now, here's the thing. Different folks, different strokes. Every client persona is going to have different needs, problems, and solutions. So all of you are going to come up with different client personas, all different types of people, different markets, geographics, psychographics, behaviors, okay? But here's what's cool. Editor X can meet those demands. No matter who your client persona is, I am willing to bet that Editor X can take care of it. So for example, you're in the health and fitness industry and you want to serve people in that industry, and you love it, okay, well, maybe your target clients are fitness studios, and they need a website that has class booking functionality so they can, they can uh, sell tickets or sell admissions or sell memberships. Well, Editor X has that c- capacity where you can still use Editor X, accommodate those types of clients. What if you are in the online shops and retail industry, and your target clients are online shop owners, e-com, and they require that online store functionality where they can sell products, handle shipping, taxes, all that stuff. Yes, it can take care of that. Events and conferences. Maybe your target clients run large conferences online or offline and they need the capacity on their website for large amounts of traffic to book tickets, to view schedules, to RSVP for certain events. Yes, can handle it. Large companies, maybe your your target clients and you're the agency owners in the house and you got bigger clients, they got large traffic, they require a, a lot of security on their sites and reliability and they're globally recognized brands. Okay, well, again, yes, it can handle it. Point here is having Editor X in your corner as a freelancer, it's gonna empower you to grow and deliver versatile and valuable solutions to whoever your target clients happen to be. So when you work out your target customer persona, and you want to move forward and you want to use Editor X as that tool to help you grow, well, you can rest assured it can help you. All right. So we worked out kind of at a top level here, the customer persona. And please know you can ask your questions in the Q&A and you can upvote questions. So when we get to the Q&A section, if there's something that I glossed over or you want to know a little bit more about, or you want to come up on the screen later, please ask those questions, upvote those those questions, and we'll get to them. Do not worry. Okay. All right. One offer. This is the next step. So we got one customer persona, one offer. So the offer is the key to the client's lock. Think of it that way. There we go. Another poll. I love polls. It's like I get to analyze data about who's here and what's going on. Do you have one clear offer or do you customize for each client? I want to know this. I want to see what's going on. I want to get a bit of a temperature test here. So I have one offer, one offer plus options to customize or tailored to the client. So let me know in that poll, vote right now. I want to see those results rolling in. I'm very curious. Okay. I'm not surprised. It looks like an overwhelming majority of people tailor their offers to the client starting to tweak a little bit we've got one offer with options to customize okay and not very many have one offer so this is exactly what i was thinking and that's not bad okay look i get it we're creative professionals we like variety we like having different uh, solution uh, problems with different solutions we like coming up on the fly okay great I think that an aspect of that is good. And a big pushback I get when I say you should have one offer is like, that sounds like rigid and boring and constrained. Like I'm a creative professional and, you know, I want to be able to have flexibility and freedom and have all these different types of projects. And I go, okay, great. But how is that working out for you? Are you not here because we're not satisfied with how many clients we have? The reality is, In creative businesses, constraints and boundaries facilitate 
massive amounts of creativity. It's like, think about this, any creative person in here, let me know if you, if this resonates with you in the chat. You're an artist, you're a creative, you're a designer, digital or otherwise. And I say, here's a pen, create me something amazing. You're like, okay, that's vague, but sure. That's the equivalent of any client, any type of project, any solution. Put that in a compartment. Now here's the other option. I come up to you and I give you a pencil and this random thing I found on my desk. And I say, turn this into something absolutely beautiful worth selling. You're like, sweet. I got some serious constraints here that I have to work with. I've got a medium that I need to work with. I've got a tool that I have to work with and I've got a size. There's boundaries. And then if I were to say, do it again, Okay, now try again, make it better, make it better, make it better. You, you better believe that 10 times of doing that, you're gonna, you're gonna have a process, and I know this is a strange example, but just bear with me here. You have a process that you refine, and you get to be creative, and you go, well, this is my constraint. How do I make it different? How do I change it up? How do I make variety out of it? How do I play with this? That boundary explodes your creativity. So I think the whole, I like any client, every client, any problem, any solution is bunk. It's a smoke screen and, and a, a wall you hide behind because you're afraid to put yourself out there and say, this is what I stand for. This is who I serve. This is what they suffer with. And this is my solution to solving that problem. Rather than, I don't know, maybe they want a font. Maybe they want a website. Maybe they like brand books. Maybe they want me to just do a little coaching. Maybe they want a little this, a little that. It's just, it's unremarkable. And it's the reason why nothing's moving forward in the business. It's because it's all over the place. You can't make any progress in any one thing. Also, the more successful your business, the more time you could buy for personal work to be crazy creative and go be a painter and, 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 and explore and write music or whatever you need to do to explore and, and flourish that creativity. Your business is business, remember, after all people who have problems and you provide the solutions. It's as simple as that. You just have to be creative. So think about it that way as well. Okay, let's keep going. Seth Godin says, don't find customers for your products, find products for your customers. I think it's a really cool switcheroo way of thinking of it. Instead of going, here's my solution. Who wants to buy it? A lot of us do that. You go, who do I want to serve? And what do they really suffer with? What do they need? What's their lock? I'm going to go and manufacture a key to open it for them. And because there's one of them, there's a thousand of them. And that is that secret. You find that. That's why I said the customer persona is the base. You find out what, what do you need? I want to serve you. I'm in business to serve you. And then you find out what they suffer with and you find that key. You make the key and you get better and better and better at producing that key. This is what it visualized looks like. Many offers versus one offer. Many offers is you spreading yourself thin and trying lots of different things and never knowing what's working because you can't know. One offer is you're trying this out and you're listening for signal and you keep turning that dial up and you keep moving and moving and you make progress. It's like running. If you run for one day, you're not going to see any efforts, okay? If you're, if you're like, I'm going to be healthy, I'm going to run, I'm going to diet, I'm also going to do a lot of push-ups, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to be a swimmer, I'm going to uh, do jumping jacks. I'm going to try that, you know, CrossFit thing. And I do this. So you're doing seven or eight different things to be healthy. And then you basically don't see any progress because you burn yourself out and you're like, I don't know what this is. But if you're like, I'm going to run every day, that's it. And you do that for like three months, six months, a year, you're going to be a runner. It's just, it's, it's as simple as that. Okay. Um, Emily says, what type of constraints do people charge per application per page? Okay. Well, we'll get to more specific things a little later, Miguel. Um, I'm curious what you mean, Miguel. This is contradictory with the question on the poll tailored versus one. Um, feel free to clarify and we can come back to it as well. Okay, so one offer. In the workbook, it looks something like this. What's the big idea? What does it solve? What are the valuable outcomes? What's the delivery time? What's the timeline? What's the price? Okay. So again, 
remember this, these steps are not hard and fast rules for you to follow. And if you don't do it exactly the way it says, you're going to fail. Even if you just incorporate this a little more clearly and instead of spreading yourself thin everywhere, you kind of dial other things down and you test this one area out for a longer period of time, even that is much, much better. Okay? The closer you can get to this, the better. And you're not only going to end up at the end of this with just one offer, you're a one-trick pony, and that's it. No, no, no. The freelancers and the agencies who successfully implement this have multiple offerings. They have a tier of offerings. They have done-for-you services. They have done-with-you programs. They have products. They have software. They have things that you can buy. They have high ex expensive offerings, and they have mass market offerings. But they start with one. One customer persona, who they represent, what's the one problem that they really suffer with that I can de develop a, a world-class solution to and run with that. And you're going to start to see as you focus on that, different opportunities sprouting off of that that you can explore and incorporate as a portfolio of income sources, okay? All right. So in the workbook, you want to be able to write down your skills, your expertise, what you're good at, like what you're really good at, hard skills, soft skills. What are the pain points being solved with your offer? Okay. So in, the, in my case here, my example that I use with John Doe, I'm going to run with this. So my skills, I got extensive experience in the online course industry. I wrote five plus years as a web designer, but that's more like 12. Excellent communication and sales skills. I can meet with the person. I can, I can connect with them and I can help and I can understand what it is that they need. I can read between the lines, kind of extract information I need and relay, relay that back to them. So good communication. Now, good in design. I'm also have experience in the, in the kind of coaching and, and online course industry. Okay, so there's a few things there. Now, pain points being solved. That work-life balance that he suffers with, okay, that's something that I can help with. Reducing the overwork, work with multiple clients simultaneously, eliminate income ceiling. So with my offer, I aim to reduce or eliminate these pain points. Okay, what are the valuable outcomes for the client? Increased income, reduced travel, scalable one-to-many model, credibility, and more time with family. Okay, how are you going to deliver this? I'm going to deliver it via one-to-one -one consulting with video calls, some, a project management tool to give some guidelines and steps and some action steps, homework, and I'm going to build out the site in Editor X. I'm going to build out their marketing. And in Editor X, their marketing, marketing collateral, I'm going to build out their course curriculum and allow them to manage their students and their online sales in the Editor X dashboard that I set up for them. So there's my, that's how I deliver the offer. The timeline for the offer is I can do this in 30 days. And then I can also offer a retainer on the back end of that. Okay, what am I going to charge for that? Let's say five to $6,000 one time, and I can work out a retainer afterwards. So like, let's say what, this is what my offer is starting to take shape based on my customer persona and based on what they suffer with, okay? And my offer, this is where you can write down like what, it, what is it called? What are you going to call your offer? So in my case here, I'm going to say expertise at scale. I'm going to convert your signature speaking engagement into a scalable course or coaching program in 30 days. You'll get a full curriculum design, website and marketing materials with an all-in-one convenient dashboard, it's 5K up front and 500 bucks a month retainer thereafter, which is optional. There's my offer. So now just think of this. Imagine I go to this person and I, I do some research and I find out these people exist. These are the sufferings that they have and they don't have a good solution for it. They're not good at their website. Their course materials are all over the place. They don't have a course. They're a great speaker, but they could be scaling their, their skills and their expertise by offering digital programs as well. Okay, so I go... Here's my offer for you. And I explained that. They are going to go, that sounds amazing. Or maybe you've not done your homework and they go, well, that sounds good, but I actually already have a course. And, but then that's where you research your customer persona. What do they really suffer with? Maybe your hypothesis is you don't have a course. And they go, well, you, I do actually. But you find out by asking questions what the real problem is. So instead of you going, I build online courses and, and marketing materials for speakers. They go like, we got that on lock. We don't need that. So you've developed a key without looking for a lock. Look for the lock first, then develop the key. 
based on your skill set, your skills, experience, what you can solve, what, how valuable it is for the client. This is what you're going to be doing. Okay. Now, in my example, like I said, I use Editor X to build out the website, I build out the marketing collateral, the course curriculum, student management course sales dashboard. This is something that you can do in Editor X, which is amazing. So, in that offer that I put together, this is something that I can deliver. So, why does this work? You found the lock, you've created the key, and now what you can do is repeat that offer, refine it, get feedback, find out what works, what doesn't, improve it, improve it, improve it, get testimonials, and massage that offer and repeat it so that you can re reap the rewards. Visualize value, uh, Twitter account by Jack Butcher. Um, he visualizes usually uh, Naval Ravikant's like thoughts and solve via iteration, then get paid by repetition. Looks something like this. So this is you solving via iteration. You figuring out who, you know, who am I serving? What do they suffer with? And so you got that offer. You're trying out your offer. You're playing with it. You're tweaking it until you find what they really need. And then you repeat it. You get paid by a repetition. If you just stop at creating shapes, you'll just be constantly creating new shapes and you're not compounding on top of that. Whereas when you get paid by a repetition, you can keep getting better and better and better and, and becoming truly world-class at your offer and in your business. So this one's a question. Throw it up in the chat. Um, what are your offer ideas? Do you have any ideas from talking about this? And don't answer build websites for clients. Yes, building websites is going to be a part of it. Designing websites, you know, sure. That's like a skill that you have and it's probably a part of your solution and your offer. But what is your, what are some offer ideas? Do you have an offer right now that you already work with? Maybe you have some brainstorming ideas. Throw them up in the chat if you want. This is your time to just throw it in there and I'd be curious to see what people think so far. Okay. Now, while we do that, oh, let's see. We, I design and develop websites um, for SaaS startups. Okay, and you're using Webflow. Okay, so it's like, there you go. You're, you're using a tool for a t customer and it's for, yeah, so it's B2B SaaS startups. You're using a tool and you're developing websites. That, there's clarity in that offer, okay? Help my clients launch their lifestyle brand in 60 days. Brand strategy, brand identity, finish it off with web design. That is very cool. Speci specifically work with spiritual entrepreneurs in the coaching industry, help them express themselves online. So that, that's got the, the workings of an amazing offer. I like to think of in a framework like this. I help target client solve this problem by doing this. That's one way of putting it. Or I help target client achieve major goal in timeline by doing this. These are some frameworks that you can kind of Mad Lib style plug and play. So feel free to think about that. Braden says, I'm not sure about the offer, but I want to educate people, empower them to learn the skills uh, and rather than creating dependencies. Cool. So you're, so what you do there is what kind of people? Who are they? And then go find them. Talk to them. Book some calls with them. Don't sell anything. So I got nothing to sell. I just want to ask you some questions. I'm building a business where I help so-and-so achieve this. And, and I, I feel like I need to know some more. And I'd love to know if you'd be willing to jump on a 10-minute call that I can kind of ask you some questions. You know, here's $10 to Amazon uh, as a gift card for your time. Just like a quick thought. Okay. Lots of cool uh, thoughts here. Great. Web design, focus on sports and industry clubs. Okay. This is great. So... I encourage you to keep thinking about this. And this is where when you print out that worksheet, print out a few and come up with like five or six different offers. And then when you join the Creative X crew, we'll try and poke holes in it and see where you can massage that and make into a truly good, valuable offer. Now, we're moving on to the next piece here. Um, one marketing channel. This is the next piece. Freelancers, <laughs> sorry, not sorry, are lousy marketers. It's because typically we don't know where to put our efforts and we don't track our results. We're usually trying to be everywhere at once. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Facebook, email marketing. We're all over the place and we're doing it all by ourselves. It's not like we have a team doing all that for us and we're doing everything, hoping that it's going to, something's going to stick. So pick one channel that you know is going to give you good signal that is, has some sort of promise or that's where your target clients hang out and stick with it for a long time, one year. 
and throughout measure your results. Let me show you how. But first, I'm going to illustrate <laughs> what this looks like. This is you everywhere at once. You're all over the place. You get no traction anywhere. And then you wonder two months in why nothing's happening. It's because you haven't reached a threshold for any of them to trigger any sort of response because you're everywhere. It's, it's muddied. It's diluted. It's watered down. Like it's like a bad coffee that you also threw extra boiling water in rather than just having like a straight double shot of espresso straight out of the machine. Like it's a different concentration. So one marketing channel consistently. Here are some ideas. Throw some ideas in the chat too. You know, what stands out to you? But here, here are some ideas. I just threw them up on the screen here and I, I created a little notion board for myself. This is the way I think. You know, how long does this take? How easy it is? Is it scalable? What's the marketing goal? So direct outreach, content marketing, networking, referrals, niche communities, email, social video, podcasting, paid ads. That's for a different stage in the business. You know, collaborations, directories, and marketplaces, public speaking, events, influencer marketing. These are just some ideas for marketing channels. Those, that's what marketing channels are. Places, a channel for you to market. Okay, we're in the digital space and we have to pick a place to go to make some noise and add some value and look, make noise and listen for signal, okay? So poll, poll time, coffee break. Which marketing channel do you want to perfect? Okay, we're gonna throw some options up on the screen and if they're not on the screen, just like shout it out in the chat. Let's see, what do we got? Okay. Direct outreach, content marketing, referrals, social media, email, or other. I put those in the poll because typically that's what we're going to focus on as freelancers. Not a lot of us are going to focus on like influencer marketing or paid ads at this stage, but I want to know what would you want to perfect? What do you think is going to get you the most signal? What's going to get you the most results? So let's see here. Ah, this is cool. So what do we got? We got 25% direct outreach. 34% social media marketing. Ooh, starting to tip the scales a little bit here. We got content and referrals. Okay, email marketing and then other. Okay, so this is interesting to me. You need, I have no idea option. Well, Becky, you know what? Like you're in the right place. We're gonna help you figure that out. If not right here in the webinar, that's again what the Creative X crew is about. We're gonna help you out, figure that out because not everybody knows, okay? So looks like we're basically one, First place is social media marketing, and number two is direct outreach. Okay, now we're kind of we're kind of on the money here. This is these are some areas that are worth perfecting. Now let me say that social media marketing, it, it in all of these cases, but especially social media marketing, if you don't commit to that for a long period of time and concentrate your efforts as say like this is the space that I'm going to choose. Now when you say social media marketing. Don't choose all the social tools. Find the one social media tool that's where your clients are. But before you do that, go find your target client based on your persona. Remember the building blocks I'm telling you? You skip a step, the whole thing falls down. It's like building a, a freaking uh, Jenga tower with like nothing at the bottom or just like one little wobbly brick. Like build the base. Find who the person is. Then you can go like, where do you hang out? Like, where's your, what's your social tool of choice? Where do you go to find solutions to that problem you just told me about? And they're like, oh, LinkedIn, all the way. Or they're like, mm, this group, it's this group. And you're like, what's that group? And you're like, oh, it's a community. Uh, it's, a, it's a paid community by this uh, blogger or podcaster. And it is so great. We're all there. And you're like, how much is it? I don't even care how much it is because me paying to be in part of that community I'm going to get access to people like you, your brains, what you're, what you're struggling with. And I get to find out what I can do to help. So the person first, okay, the offer. So you're prepared, right? Okay. Marketing channel. This is where you go. Where, where are they? Don't just pick. I love Twitter or I love Pinterest or I love Facebook or I love whatever, 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 whatever community, whatever form, whatever website, like, where are they? Be there for a long time. Okay, social media marketing, direct outreach. Again, if you're going to send 30 emails and you get mostly no, which is what's going to happen, by the way, don't like don't take it personally. There's a good way of doing it, by the way, too. Um, 
you're going to get mostly no. And if you quit after 30 days, like you'll never see anything. Do it for a year. And then you'll start to see how to get better at it, how to find the right people, how to be more empathetic and not a total like dink when you're cold emailing people. There's a good way of doing it. Okay. There's, you can have tact and taste. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, marketing channel in the workbook looks like this. So we want to know which channel. I went on a rant about it just now. What's the goal? I'm going to explain what the goal is. Timeline, objective, how do you measure it? How do you influence income, success indicators? Let me break these down real briefly here so you understand what I'm trying to put together. So pick the channel. Print four or five of these out and then put them side by side and go, which one is going to be harder? Which one is going to be better? Which one should I focus my efforts on? Okay. Channel. Let's say it's direct outreach. Okay. And your goal, so this is like marketing speak. What's your marketing goal here? Not like my goal is like to feel good about my work week. Like that's not a marketing goal that you can measure. You want an actual measurable goal. So leads, my goal is leads. I want people who are on the call with me. They actually book a call, an automated call through my calendar. And I see on my calendar, ooh, John Doe booked a call tomorrow at 1130. I better make sure I'm available because I'm going to talk to them, find out what they need. And then goodness, you put your offer together. At the end of it, you go, okay, can I make you an offer to help you with that? And they go, sure. Yeah. What do you got? There's your offer opportunity. Boom. Close the sale. You're not going to close every one of them. In fact, you're not going to close 90% of them. That's just how it works. Don't take it personally, but you keep doing it for a year. You get more and more of those calls. You get more volume of people booking those calls through the leads. Okay, great. So marketing channel, direct outreach goal is leads. That's what I'm aiming for. Timeline one year. Okay. Marathon, not a sprint. What's the objective? So this is like, what are you going to use as your benchmark for this is working? And in this case, I'm going to say $50,000 in 12 months. How do I measure progress? Like, how do I know that chart is going up and to the right? Well, I'm going to measure it in revenue in dollars or whatever your currency is. And I'm going to review it every month. Okay. Now, before anyone goes, why a year? What if I'm just committing to a year and it's not working and you just forced me to do a year of something that's not working? Listen, listen. Campaign success indicator right here. So how do we know we're succeeding in this campaign? So what are we going to do to indicate success? So by the end of quarter two, I'll have generated 20,000 in revenue. That's a benchmark. I got to hit that milestone. And by the end of 12 months, I'll have generated 50K. So you got that quarter two. So you got two full quarters. That's six months for you to commit to this. Me review it every month. Okay, it's working a little bit. Not quite here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. By the end of quarter two, you should have 20K in revenue if you're doing, if, based on your hypothesis. If you do, keep it going. This is working. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. If it's not, how can we influence the outcome? You're not just hoping it works. So I'm going to increase my outreach efforts. Maybe I'm outreaching to, you know, 10 people a week. Well, I got to increase that. Uh, improve the offer messaging on the website and the emails. Maybe you're just not making a clear offer. Maybe the value proposition is not there. Follow up with more people. Maybe you, you've had 20 leads and you don't follow up. Well, you're missing out on that's leaving money and opportunity on the table. Okay. Personalize the offering and messaging. So what are you going to do to influence the outcome? You have control over those things. You don't have control over if it works. You have control over if you're doing the right steps and putting in the effort and doing the reps and showing up, putting on the running shoes and going for the run, even though you don't want to. I ran 10 minutes today. I'm going to run 20 minutes tomorrow, 30 minutes the next day, and so on and so forth. It's the same idea. And any additional notes well, I put here, I'm going to reach out to 30 potential clients a week. Commit to that. So that's my marketing channel I put together on the workbook. Print it out a number of times and fill it out and really think it through. And then it's contingent on the previous steps. Who's the target customer? What do they suffer with? What are you going to, uh, what's your offer? And, and how are you going to connect to these people? Why does this work? If you're consistent in one area over time, you're going to see results and your efforts are going to compound. It looks like this. The results and the time and effort most of us will do this, do this, do this, and just duck out right here because nothing's basically happening. But what this is doing 
is it's laying the foundation for, uh-oh, something happens right there. And then it compounds. And then you're out of control. And then you have good problems. Like I have too many clients. I'm, I'm too booked. My offers are too varied. My pricing is too low for, for what I really need it to be. I need to ratchet down the, like I need to be able to capture this demand, but ratchet down the incoming up the pricing. Like these are good problems to have. Braden says, this is so funny because I tell my clients to niche down and I see the results, but I haven't thought to do it for myself. This, Braden, thank you. You just illustrated my point exactly at the beginning when I said you can't read the label from inside the jar. We're really good at giving advice and helping our clients, but not ourselves, which is why we need things like this. Whoops. Why we need things like this webinar and communities and outside perspective from mentors, from community members. That's why we need this. So moving on to one conversion method. Again, any questions, throw them in the chat. We'll do our best to get to them. Also, any of these questions, if we don't get to them, there's like hundreds of you here. So I'm not gonna be able to get to every question. That's why we're gonna join the Creative X crew. That's where we continue this conversation. And these are questions that will get answered. Okay, conversion method. What's a conversion method and why does it matter? Focusing on a single conversion method improves your chances of converting potential clients. Test different methods and find the best fit for your target audience. So what is this conversion method? It's a specific strategy or a tactic that's used to persuade and convince potential clients to take the action that you want them to take. So there's a few different actions that you might want them to take. So what do you think are some actions you want your clients to take? What are some conversion methods? Share them in the chat, okay? Different actions you want them to take. I'll give you some examples. So here's your target audience on the left. Here's the marketing goal, leads on the right, for example. I'll show you some examples. That's the conversion method. So I need to get John Doe on a consultation call so I can make sales. Okay. Free strategy call, discovery call. These are great. Uh, lots of people saying discovery meetings, discovery calls. These are great ways of either getting leads or sales, depending on your objective for or your marketing goal. Okay. So Editor X, for example, this is why I think it's great. You build out your site, your, your business site on Editor X, and this isn't even talking about your clients yet. You can have your leads book a call with you right on your editor X site. You have your portfolio up, you have your work, you have your offer, the sales page, and then the call to action is the book of free discovery meeting. Instead of stringing together three, four, five different tools, which believe me, I know that pain. Just build it in with editor X. It's right there. It's all in one spot, in one dashboard. It's easy to do. Here's another example. John Doe, maybe my marketing goal is to get some leads. So I want email addresses that I can nurture a relationship over the course of the next week or two. So my conversion method is maybe a landing page. Okay. Landing page to get that email. Here's a good example. Editor X site. You can create a beautiful high converting landing page quickly, easily. You don't need to go around to all these landing page builders just to string together some site. You can actually build a beautiful landing page that you can later expand into your full site in Editor X, put that email opt-in in there to get those leads. Another example, John, my marketing goal, maybe he's already a customer. Maybe I have a customer persona and, and these are my customers that I want to stay loyal to the brand, to me. And I want them to keep coming back because here's where your other clients are, by the way, it are your current clients. Your current clients trust you the most because you've helped them and they've already given you money at some point and you've given them more value in return. They're the ones most likely to book again and to get referrals. So don't forget your referral marketing strategy, encouraging referrals and, and booking those clients. So you want that are already clients, you want that loyalty. So let's say you have an email newsletter, an automated drip sequence, which I love doing. And it runs 24 seven based on the time that they signed up. And then they get that email newsletter sequence, they get a monthly newsletter, a weekly newsletter, or a daily sequence, depending on your brand and your needs and your, your business. Editor X also allows you to send beautiful automated email campaigns to your email list in Editor X. It's all in one place. And you can send nice, whether it's plain text or like beautifully designed, whatever your flavor is and your brand, uh, right in Editor X. Just keeps it nice and simple. So conversion method 
in the workbook looks like this. You got to pick a method. You've got to uh, pick a call to action. What's the flow, the funnel, the tools required? How do you influence the income? What are the success indicators and what are the number of conversions required for you to know if you're, this is working? So what's the method? Let's say free consultation. Lots of people in here saying free consultation. What's the call to action that you want that, that you want on say like the offer is buy, you know, or download workbook, for example. What is the call to action, right? So the method and the call to action. Got it? Conversion flow. What is it like? What are the steps for that conversion to take place? Well, maybe I do my direct outreach. I link them off to my video sales page. I schedule a free consult. I close the deal and I schedule the delivery of the service or the offer. Okay. What tools do I need for that to take place? I'm going to say in my example, editor X for the website, video hosting, calendar booking tool, invoice, payment capture, client relationship management. Okay. And I, I love using Trello. I also use Notion a lot now. I've kind of replaced it, but <laughs> still got a bit of a loyalty to, to Trello. Uh, it's helped me a lot through my freelance career. But lead management, I incoming leads. I get those leads there and I can work them through the client pipeline. Okay, how can I influence the income? Okay, I can improve my sales video. Maybe on my, my landing page, I have a video. Maybe I improve the sales video. I get better equipment. I write a better script. I get more natural. Maybe the script is too rigid and I just go free flow and I take a few takes. I improve it. I improve the messaging and improve the call to action. That's what I could do. That's one way. Add some case studies. Maybe you've had two or three clients who you've offered this offer for free or discount for testimonials. Get those testimonials on there. That's going to be worth their weight in gold. Add it to the website. Get feedback as well. So from leads who didn't close, implement that on the sales page. So when they don't take you up on the offer, can I just ask you, you know, what, what is it that didn't work for you today? Or why is it that this isn't, you know, uh, what you need? And they explain, and you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't clarify that on the sales page. Okay, thanks. I really appreciate it. And then you go and implement that on the sales page. So the next time someone reads it, they go, yeah, that's me. That's exactly me. Success indicator. How do we know we're succeeding? Okay. Let's say I want to close 3% of direct outreach for a total of around one new client per month. And I also have a metric of eight clients at 5K and two of them upgrade to monthly retainers at $500 a month. So then I could do the math there. How often am I going to review if this is working to make sure I'm not committing to a year of no success? Review it quarterly. Give it three months. Okay. And then what do I need to know? What's my benchmark to know like this is I'm on track? Well, I want 10 clients a year at 5K average. Okay. Now, any questions about that? Again, throw it up in that chat. We see it. Kira, very cool. So people are like, hey, can't we do this instead of Trello? Like, can't we do like that lead management and workflow in um, Editor X? Kira says, workflows are free within your partner dashboard as a Wix partner, plus they integrate with your partner dashboard contacts. Very cool. I didn't even realize that. Lots of things. We're all learning things here today. So that's cool. So if you want to consolidate even more so, reduce expenses of outside software, and you want to keep everything in one place with reduced complexity, which is kind of the whole point here, then that's cool. You can also do that within your dashboard. Okay. One year. This brings us to the fifth piece here. Building blocks. Remember, we're at one year. Why a year? If you follow your plan for a year and regularly review and adjust the plan on a quarterly basis to ensure progress, you can adapt as you go. So you can make subtle course changes to get yourself to a certain part where you're nice and steady on a good click. So why does this matter? Why one year? Nothing happens overnight. Short-term wins do not equal long-term success. You can have some nice little wins, but they don't mean that you're going to succeed long-term. They might be indicators, but it's not exactly what it is. So you need time. This creates momentum and consistency. It creates discipline and it makes it almost effortless. You just do the hard thing. It discourages giving up when something goes wrong because if we're just like going for a run and we hurt our ankle or hurt our knee and then you quit after four days, well, then that, that's it. But if your goal is like, no, I'm doing this for a year. This set me back a week or two? No worries, I'm, I'm getting right back up. It's discipline is doing the hard thing. 
Quarterly reviews allow you to adapt. So if you're doing it for a year and something's not quite right, let's say you're running a certain path or your shoes suck, or maybe your technique is bad, you don't stretch. Okay, adjust, tweak it up a little bit. Get those tights, you know, those compression tights. Maybe that'll help. Like you want to do something to tweak throughout the year. Okay. Workbook looks like this. Timeline, goal, quarterly focus, accountability partners. Okay, quick breakdown. Timeline, put down your timeline. So I know we're not at the exact beginning of the year, but we might as well be, you know what? You don't have to wait to the new year to start something. You can start tomorrow. Tomorrow's your new year. Put that in as your year whatever it is. What's the goal? What are you trying to achieve? In this case, I put a, a revenue goal, let's say $50,000 in that 12 month period. What is your theme focus for each quarter? Quarter one, the first three months of that year, quarter two, three, and four. So this is where you'd write down, for example, I'll just read this first one out. Let's say I want to research my client persona, interview potential customers to gain some, gain some clarity. I want to create marketing materials like my website, maybe some social Instagram stuff, if that's my, my channel. I want to offer introductory pricing for the first five clients and build it into my messaging. And my target is $10,000 in revenue for that first quarter. That's not a lot, which gives me some room to go, is this viable? Okay. And then quarter two, you build on that. Quarter three, quarter four, by the end of quarter four, we're, we're dialing on outreach, referrals, improving fulfillment, retainers, like we're on a steady click here. Accountability partners, this is key. You're just doing it in an echo chamber or just kind of in, in isolation. Uh, it's hard to have, you know, the label read from outside the jar. I'm just going to plug creative X crew here in the office hours on Thursdays or Thursday meetups. That's where you come and go. Here's my idea. Here's my workbook. Here's what I'm doing. And I go, no, that is definitely not going to help. Here's what we should try to do instead. Or, whoa, everybody can learn a thing or two from this person right here because they are on lock. Okay. The roadmap. The roadmap to success is very, very simple. But simple doesn't mean easy, okay? I've given you that five-part step, that five-part roadmap that I would follow. I'm not just like blowing smoke here or just saying, like, hey, this sounds nice. It's an actual roadmap that I would follow and do follow anytime in my service business or my coaching or education training business. I'm not quite clear. I know that my brain and what I'm doing is all over and I've got those arrows pointing in all directions. Hone it in on one channel, focus and go. This is what I would do. This is what I do. And anyone with any significant sized business, freelance agency or otherwise, if you talk to them deep enough, you'll see that following some semblance of this is why it worked. They said, I focused on this. And I just did that. I simplified and focused. That's what got me some traction. But with this, there's three keys to, in, to making sure that you succeed. First key is mentorship. Learning from those who came before you, who were successful before you, that's the key. And helping you unlock your potential. They help you read the label from outside the jar. Accountability. These are those accountability partners. Provide structure. You stay disciplined. Stay on track. Turning dreams into reality. You're running. You tell somebody, I'm a runner. And I'm terrible at it. And I don't think I can do it. But you are going to make sure I do it. That's an accountability partner. And key three, you need some support. You need a community. It's key to getting help, motivation, camaraderie during the hard parts. You're running. Again, I'm using this running. I'm not even a runner. But I get the idea here. It's hard. It's not enjoyable. But you do it. Because you know it's good for you. Physically and mentally. And you're running. You're halfway through. And you're like, man, this sucks. Like, I, I'm in pain. I don't like this. It's gray and rainy outside. But you got a buddy running beside you. In fact, you got an army of people running with you and going like, go, don't give up. Let's go. Like, push through. We've got this. That's support. That's community. And so that's Creative X Crew. Mentorship, accountability, support. Nice little Venn diagram here. We're smack dab in the bullseye between those three. That's what we provide. It's my free keyword free online community for creative professionals like you who want to skyrocket their business and achieve their goals as a freelancer or agency founder. You're going to be on the, you're already on this path together. Okay. So you get to continue this journey together. You get that army. You're running solo right now. You're going to be adopted into the creative X crew. Now you got all of us behind you. Okay. And some of us ahead saying like, go, go, go this way, do this, watch out for this. There's a pothole. 
okay? You get mentorship from experts, not only myself, but there's other people we bring in to help teach you stuff. Support from a thousand plus creative professionals in all walks of life, places in the world, stages in their business, from nothing to multiple six figures a year, everyone in between. Accountability, like-minded crew members, resources, training events, networking, it's all there. Here's just a little peek behind the curtain, what you get if you're not already there. Activity feed lets you see what's new at a glance. You could filter through, you can adjust your notification settings. I like this space more than this space. I wanna go to that event, it's all there. Join a live workshop. We do office hours every week. On Mondays, we do a co-working session. We just chill, bring coffee, we play some music. We don't talk, we just work on something, okay? We do actual events like workshops, typography workshops, things like what we're doing right now. You can also join a course. We're adding to this as we go and figuring out what do people need, but you can learn something new. Get live coaching, weekly feedback as you put your workbook into action. And I'm inviting you to do that. And you can do that right now. You can take a little snappy snap right there so you don't have to go anywhere on your, your phone unless you're using your phone to watch the webinar. All this is gonna be available afterwards, the replay, everything. So don't feel like when I switch away, it's gone. Cause it's not, you're gonna make sure that you have access to the Creative X crew as well. Now, so we take some questions. So I know that there's tons of questions here. Like everybody I'm gonna say right now, yes, there's a replay, 100% replay, replay all day, every day. We're gonna cut this down. We're gonna give you highlights. We're gonna give you the full replay. It's all gonna be available. Promise, promise, promise. We're totally not lying. There's a replay, absolutely replay. Creative X crew, Sabrina, free. It's just free. It's just what we ask is your commitment and your time and your effort. Do the hard thing with us. Questions, we got questions in the Q&A, but I've also got a few questions here that you've submitted. For those of you who, when you signed up, you registered, you asked questions, you know that little box? I saw all the questions. I got all the questions. I tried to find patterns and I tried to find ways to, to, to answer as many as I could without, <laughs> there's probably like, 200 questions so obviously that's not going to work what i did fun little tip i copied all the inputs and i pasted into chat gpt and i was like hey what are some patterns in these questions what are people asking what are the themes what are some common themes here that people want to me to answer and so that helped me put together kind of a little bit of a, a synthesized version of what people are asking some specific ones I plucked out because they're fun and they're really relevant. Other ones like to kind of represent your questions. So hopefully we can answer a lot of the Q&A through some of these. So we ready for some Q&A? Let's get started. So these are your questions, sometimes augmented with chat GPT. Okay. Is it worth trying to educate a client who doesn't value design or is it better to move on to another client? Great question. Okay. So <laughs> also, opening up a can of worms, I'm gonna try and be really specific about this. The closer you get to this workbook that we went through together today, the closer you are to knowing who your client is, what they suffer with, what you're gonna to offer to them, where they are, how you're gonna convert them, and how long you commit to doing that, the less of this problem you will have. A lot of freelancers' problems are as a result of being all over the place. You get every client from every which way with every all sorts of problems and frustrations. A lot of it is going to, to come down to the closer you are to your dream target client, the less of these annoying problems you're gonna have. You're still gonna have them, but to answer this specifically, is it worth trying to educate a client? Okay, if your client is your target client and you really wanna serve them, then yes. Also, valuing design is, not really the point here. The point is you're serving them. You're solving their problem. Design is a part of it. And the more confident you are in your offer and how it solves their problem, they're going to be focusing on, oh, you're helping me achieve that. Oh, you're relieving that pain. They're not going to be the ones going, well, I see the the bandage you're using is kind of like a like a, a mucky color. Can we use like a real fun, like, I don't know, gradient and make it pop and wrap that around my leg? They're not going to worry about that. You get to choose the bandage, so to speak, the design, the style that matches what it is that your brand is, but what the client needs. The whole point is you're serving the client and solving their problem. They're not going to worry so much about the design. So take like five steps back from this question. Sure, you can educate them, but 
that comes with you finding the right client and being professional and confident in what you offer and how it solves the client's problems. Okay. And educating your client as well. That's part of your brand on your social media. Maybe you're on LinkedIn, you're on Instagram, you have an email newsletter. You can send out your weekly, let's say your clients are coaches and you go, how coaches can get the most out of their branding. And then you could go into your insights and they'll see you as an expert. You know, you're on podcasts for coaches talking about how, why design matters for coaches. And then you can give them insights from your perspective as an expert designer to them as a coach. And they go, wow, that person really knows what they're talking about. I'm going to go check them out and book a call. See what I mean? Good question. How can I transition from a senior UX designer role to web design and have more autonomy? Well, that's really just kind of comes up to, comes down to what your specific path. Basically, you can put any, anything here, senior UX designer, junior front end developer, any of these. How do I move into web design, have more autonomy? I think what you're trying to ask here is how do I go from that full-time job to working for myself in a field that I like more? It's a transition. It's a, it's a, it's a period of time. Give yourself an exit strategy, build that in, get some clients moving. So let's say you start freelancing on the side while you're working your senior UX design role, get some clients on the side, use the five, the rule of ones, the five steps. You have less to lose here. You've got less risk. So you can really focus on one thing. Like you don't have to like pepper around lots of different things. You can focus because you've got that job over time. You can start to make that transition. Maybe even your employer can become your client. Okay, honest question. This came from you guys, one of you. How long does it take to grow a lovely mustache like yours? I put this in here because one, it's funny. And two, I'm going to find a way to make it very relevant and actually helpful to this presentation. So growing a lovely mustache in your words, is like building a successful freelance career, which takes time, commitment, and experimentation. A well-groomed mustache and a strong online presence can help you stand out. But you gotta commit at least three months of growth to see success. It's true. If you're growing that mustache, if you're building that freelance career, and you quit a month in, it's not gonna look good. Commit to three months at least. That's that quarter. Review it, trim it up, keep going, keep going, keep going. This is officially a year of having a mustache, keeping it trimmed, finding my unique style. So that is how growing a lovely mustache, not only how long does it take, but how it's relevant to you growing your business. How was that? Was that good or not? How do you deal with difficult clients? You don't work with them. That's my straight up answer. The more specific your dream client, the less these difficult clients are going to come about. Now, listen, quick, quick story. I recently had a client who was a perfect match for my, what I wanted to do and for my customer persona, but they were, you know, it was a little bit of higher needs uh, throughout the project, but it's okay. Cause I like the client. They matched what I want, who I wanted to serve. And I charged a high premium price for the offering. It just softens the blow when they're like, I need this, or can we tweak this or change this? Also, they see you as the expert when you go, no, 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 sorry. Like, I understand what you're trying to see here and what you're going to go for, but, but like, remember, remember, this is going to take us off track. And does this get us closer to our objective of solving X, Y, Z, or is this more of a personal preference? Because we can go this way, but it's not going to get you where you're going. And also that's outside of scope. So we're going to have to charge extra, but as the expert here, the professional, let, let me let me take care of this for you. And they go, oh, you know what? You're right. I apologize. You do what you do best, okay? Greg has a good comment in there. This doesn't necessarily always work, but I ask clients to set, uh, to include a set of terms in their contract and make a bullet list that are key to my contract and send it to them. If they don't want to include those, it's definitely a red flag. Look for red flags. How can I establish trust with potential clients during the initial conversations and through my website? Quality branding, consistency, reliability, professional, all of these things are going to stem from you filling out this workbook and following these principles. One client, one offer, one marketing channel, one conversion method, one year. They go, oh, you're the, 
you're the editor X web designer who builds like those bomb websites and, and course like curriculums for coaches, right? Like my buddy and this other person, like I checked it and that was you, right? Like, yeah, that's me. That's what I do. And I've got a waiting list and you might, you might want to get on it. Like that's, that's where you get that. But if you're just like, I don't know, I'm creative and I'm also kind of professional. I got a website and I also do this. I kind of do this. I'm a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm whatever you want me to be. Okay. I know that's like an Elvis Presley song somewhere in there, but uh, it doesn't work in business. It doesn't work in business. And also Thomas, it's a mystery until you hop on a call, talk to them, talk to them, ask questions. Kind of answered this question earlier. How do I safely transition from full-time job to working for myself as a freelancer? It's a transition. It's a period of time. It takes time. It's not overnight. Anyone who tells you that is lying or selling you something. Okay. <laughs> it's just give it time. It took me a year and that was rapid. And I had freelance clients. It could be less. I didn't have this roadmap. If I did probably could have actually done it in six months. Okay. With less clients starting out, follow the roadmap. Okay. Get a community. Creative X crew is a great place to start. Get that accountability, mentorship, guidance. Miguel says, get a rich woman, then you can transition easy. <laughs> okay, how can you freelance? A good question. Those of you here who are up real late right now in all different parts of the world, how do I freelance as a web designer from India, build a personal brand on social and attract global clients? Here's the thing. You got access to the internet, just like me. We got access to all these people. It all comes down to boring but true answer following the principles that you're going to find in the workbook, one client persona. I don't need to list them all out. They're all there. You know them. Follow that. Be consistent. Be valuable to the people you want to serve and who are suffering with something. Show up consistently. Don't be the needy person who needs clients and needs the attention and needs the work. We all need the work, okay? But you want the client to need you. And we've all seen this. The needier you are, the more repulsive it is. It works in business too. If you're like, please hire me, that's not going to work. That goes for everybody. So if you're on the other side of the world and you want to attract global audience, maybe you want some American clients and you want that nice, sweet US dollar income where you have more buying power, cool. Like that's a really cool leverage. You got to find your niche, your audience, do that research show up and be better, not just in skills, because that's the thing is if you try and fight on skills or price, you're, that's, that's a race to the bottom. You won't win that. Somebody's always faster. Somebody's always cheaper. Be better. Be more valuable. Listen more. Have a higher quality brand. Have a better offer. Charge more. Charge less, but have a way to scale it. Like you need to find your unique differentiating factor. And that goes for anybody. I want to get to your questions as well on the thing. So this is a good one here. I know a lot of people are asking this. Okay, let's talk about this for a sec. What are the pros and cons of Editor X compared to Webflow or other no-code tool? Okay, I'm going to revert here to one of our Creative X crew members. Shout out to Alex, who went from WordPress to Webflow to Editor X. This guy's a developer. He's extremely talented and is intimately involved and aware in all of these different tools. Okay. I've played with Webflow. I've played with Bubble. I've played with all the tools. I've been in this game for like 11 years. But Editor X says that something special and it's also different. It's not just a website builder. But let, let's let, let Alex explain this here. Little comparison chart here Editor X, fast and easy to work with, intuitive interface, easy to learn, unlimited free sites, advanced functionality when you need it. And, and when you don't want it, it, it's not there confusing you. You can do custom code. There's a content management system. There's e-commerce. There's apps to extend your functionality. Okay, some of the little cons here. It's a newer platform. There's some teething issues. I thought that was a cute way of putting it. But the team are super quick to improve the product and help you out. So I've had people in the Creative X crew who go, oh, Brad, I tried this out in Editor X and it wasn't quite working the way I wanted. I'm a little frustrated. And I go, guess what? I got them on a call with someone at Editor X. They come back going, that was amazing. I actually got to talk to somebody building the product. They helped me. And now I have more like confidence in what I'm doing in Editor X and you as a community manager. Uh, and also he says the animation capabilities have room to grow, but <laughs> that is going to change. And it has been changing with Lottie animations and Lottie files, but 
that those are some things. This is from Alex's words here. Webflow, good animation functionality, ecosystem of plugins, uh, powerful with lots of uh, beautiful sites, lots of cool examples. People build really cool stuff. You give talented people a tool, they'll make cool stuff. Uh, overwhelming style manager and user interface. It's like a user interface for code, and that's confusing if it's not your bag. Confusing pricing model. They often remove beloved features. They love this feature and they hinge their business on it and then they whoosh, take it away. Subpar CMS and e-commerce, you have to string a whole bunch of things together to make it work, okay? Now, let's see, we got lots of comments coming in here and I wanna pull up the questions in one more stack here. Haha, <laughs> okay. I love the voting feature. We can just focus on the top there. One more, one more question here submitted by you. Should I learn HTML and CSS or other programming languages? Sure, if you want to, but it's not what's going to make you successful or not. It's as simple as that. You're not selling HTML skills. You're not selling CSS skills. You're not selling, I'm a programmer with this knowledge. It's like you're selling a, a solution to the problem for your target client. If that happens to mean you require to use HTML and CSS or your team requires this specific programming language or specific platform, sure. But you going and being an HTML master for like a year and then saying you're going to get, no, cut that out. It's not going to work. You don't need, you don't need it. Just do it because you want to. And it's a valuable thing to learn, but that's not what makes you successful in a freelance business. Okay. All right. Questions. I want to see your questions. What's the average cost? This is from Will at the top of the unanswered questions here. What's the average cost of a website? And also, hey, uh, Dribble and anyone else, <laughs> if you're like, hey, we're getting close on time here, Brad. I gotta, we gotta have time to like, you know, make sure we send people off to bed or lunch. I can talk all day. And I've also had too many of these coffees. So just a heads up. I won't take it personally. Will, what's the average cost of a website, whether developed using Editor X, Dribble, WordPress, or hard coding? What's the standard in the professional world? It could cost $0 or uh, $250,000 to millions. So there's a very broad and truthful answer. It does, there is no real average cost because it all depends on so many different factors. So let's just say a good benchmark for a new to junior, maybe full-time freelancer who's got their niche dialed in, a good offer, and they are able to you know, put together a really good business plan using our workbook. I don't know, like you could charge 2000 up front, you could charge 10,000 for a one page site that really solves a problem. That's something that I did recently. You can, I have colleagues who routinely charge $25,000 for simple uh, information based websites that have functionality that the client requires. There's a couple of members in the crew who talk about that in the Creative X crew. It's like, it's really, really, you don't go off of a website's cost this much because it's not a website you're selling. It's intellectual property, it's solutions to problems. It's not code, it's not design, it's not visuals, it's here's a problem, here's the value associated with the problem, or the value, the lost value associated with the pain of that problem. You solve it, it goes away, they give you money for it. That's all it is. Website is just the means to the end, okay? Great question. Miguel. How do you sell website building to a client when anyone can make a website for free today? Uh, you don't sell websites. Because you're right. All of you right now can go to EditorX and pick a sick template, use ChatGPT to come up with some dummy copy that sounds convincing, mid journey for some cool images and graphics, and like say I have a website. But is that worth anything? It's not the website that is worth anything. It's the value of the outcome that you provide for the client that is worth something. Why do we buy anything? Why did I you know, buy this mug? Because I valued more than the price I paid for this like handmade mug that was like a local maker. It was expensive, unnecessarily expensive. I could buy a mug from like a big box store for like two bucks, but I paid like $30 for literally a drinking vessel because I valued the experience more than the $30 I parted with. The mug's worthless. I mean, it probably had some cost. It's the experience. It's the look. It's the value. It's, it's, the, it's the present. It's the gift that I gave to my wife. It's my wife's mug that I stole from her, by the way. It's that that I valued more than the cost. Okay? So it's not how do you sell a website? It's how do you sell the value of an outcome? 
And that's the sort of stuff that we talk about a lot in office hours in the Creative X group. Thanks for the question. Will, what kind of pushback do you receive from clients who say they want a fully hard-coded website with a WYSI versus a WYSIWYG website? Who are your clients? Coders? Because like that's, again, if your client is like, you have to use these tools or else, that's not your client, man. Like, that's not a good client. That's a red flag. Or you got a weird niche, you know? I mean, I know that there are some freelancers who subcontract from development houses, and so their clients are literally programmers, and that's their own bag, and they got to find solutions to that. Sure, you have your own tech stack that you, that you use to fit in and solve their problems, but that's kind of a unique scenario. But... If you're like hiring, if you're a contractor and you're building a house or you're building a fence, here's a good one. And your client is like, okay, listen up, Will, contractor, man. I see that you want to build my fence. I hired you. I dropped the deposit. Okay, you're building my fence. But I will not accept you using any tool other than DeWalt to cut these materials, okay? And I know you have a supplier for your wood, but I actually mill my own boards. And they're questionable at best, probably not up to code and unsafe. But you're gonna use them because I am entitled and feel like that's the best choice for you to solve my problems. You go, you know what? Here's your money back, by the way, and sorry for wasting your time. Have a good day. And you go find an actual client. So if clients are pushing back on the tools and technology and, and your abilities and questioning your skills, you've either, you got yourself into a wrong, the wrong situation, the wrong client, or you haven't done step one. Find your target client because they don't care about WYSIWYG, hard code, type of tool. They don't care. You do you, man. You solve my problem. However you get there, so long as it's ethical and legal, like make it happen. Make it so. Thanks, Will. Brayden, what about if the client persona we want to help isn't profitable? That is where research comes in. So in your one-year focus, when you come up with your, it, this is like a science experiment. It's a game. Okay, think of it as that. There's real, you know, stakes at play, but it's a game. Here's your hypo hypothesis, what they suffer with, all these things. You put this plan together and you go with it and you make certain calculated efforts and, and thoughts and measurements like you actually reach out, reach out to these people. Maybe you determine they're not actually that profitable. Here is the answer to that. It's either you find a way to profitably deliver a solution to them at scale where you could still make good money or they're not a good match. Or there's one more step here. They're not yet profitable for you. They're in the early buying stages. So maybe they're a good type of client to add to your email list, to read your newsletter, to follow your social marketing campaigns. And maybe eventually you develop a small mass market product like a book or a course or, or an event. Maybe you do a weekly you know, um, workshop for the clients who can't afford your $5,000 service, but they can afford $150 admission to a, a workshop. 10 of them show up. Well, there you go. There's some cash flow for non-profitable clients. But you have to do that research. So it's not a guessing game. Find out. Find out where they're at in that buying journey. That's a good question. Thank you. Okay. Um, lots of questions here. Um, and what I'm going to do to be respectful of everybody's time is take note of all these. I'll jot them all down. And we're going to continue this conversation in the Creative X crew. So friends, there's that QR code again. We're going to give you the link, the email, the follow-up. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Continue the journey and this conversation over in the Creative X crew later on after this webinar. I just want to thank again, Dribble, Editor X, and all of you for coming and attending. Cheers. You're the best. Brad, thank you so much again for doing this super informative session. Everyone, let's throw some emojis in the chat for Brad saying thank you. Uh, so, so valuable. The one that stuck out to me, uh, I've been in this industry for a while, but you don't, you can't see the label while you're inside the jar. That's why it's so important to attend these webinars, everyone. So, you know, it validates ideas that we have or um, gives us a new perspective. So thank you again, Brad. Uh, just a reminder for everyone to give him a follow on Twitter at Brad Hussey. 
Uh, please give another huge thanks to our sponsors, Editor X. Give them a follow. Uh, when you start applying these, please tag them. Let them know how you're doing throughout this next year. We're got, we all have to hold each other accountable. So let's let's kind of start putting it out there. Um, and then I also want to lastly thank you all. Um, thank you so much for joining. I know there's a lot of time zones here, a lot of people that are probably going to bed now um, in the wee wee hours. So thank you again. We do these pretty often thanks to your sponsors like Editor X. So please keep an eye out for uh, the Dribble page, the Editor X page. Um, and you will be getting a recording through your registration page that you signed up. Editor X will be sending a follow-up email. So thank you all again for joining, and we'll see you at the next one.